Hello everyone, welcome back. In this presentation, we will focus on Golomb's randomness postulates. As usual, let's start the session with the outcomes. Upon the completion of the session, the learner will be able to Outcome number 1 We will know about pseudo-random and truly random numbers. And outcome number 2 We will understand the Golomb's randomness postulates with an example. Before stepping into the topic, let's quickly run through what is pseudo-random number generator. When we have a key stream generator, when we give any key as an input, it generates a key stream. And this key stream is expected to be random in nature. But practically speaking, this will not be the case because this random number is generated by a machine. Obviously, it will not be truly random, but it is said to be or referred as pseudo-random. So, we know the difference between truly random and pseudo-random. So, it is possible for a sequence to be truly random only if the length is infinite. So, obviously, only infinite length sequences can be truly random. But obviously, whatever is generated from a machine is obviously expected to be finite. And finite length sequence cannot be called as truly random and it can be called as pseudo-random if it looks random. With this note, let's see the Golomb's randomness postulate. And we need certain definitions to be known. So, we will see the definitions first. The definitions include period, run, autocorrelation and autocorrelation function. What is a period? Say, if we have a sequence, yes, this is the actual binary sequence, S0, S1, S2, S3 and so on. So, this is a binary sequence. And when we will call this binary sequence as a periodic sequence or a period, if there is some positive integer n such that s i plus n is equal to s i and the smallest value of n is called as the period of the sequence. Let's say if we have a sequence and there is a particular portion of the message or a binary sequence which is repeated, then that particular portion is called as a period. Say for example, 0, 1, 0. Let's say if 0, 1, 0 is repeated 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0. Now if you see here, this 0, 1, 0 is considered to be a period. Don't worry about this now. Anyway, when we see an example, I will explain this. Coming to the second definition, the run. A run in a binary sequence is defined as a set of consecutive zeros or ones. For example, this is a run. This is another run and this is another run. How I am saying this is a run? It is starting with zero and it is continuing and say for example, if the next bit is one, then up to this, this is a run. Now in this case, if you see, it is continuous ones and let's say here we have a zero. So before zero, everything, whatever we have is said to be a run. When we see an example at the time, it will be easy for you to understand. Now what is autocorrelation? Let A is equal to A0, A1 up to AN minus 1 be a binary sequence of length EN. So, this A0 up to AN minus 1 is a binary sequence of length N. Then the autocorrelation C of i of A. So, this C of i is referred as the autocorrelation for this sequence A is defined as A XOR A rotate i times. Don't worry about this. I will explain this autocorrelation in the example part. Also, what is an autocorrelation function? The autocorrelation function C of tau of a binary sequence a0, A1 up to AP is defined as C of tau is equal to 1 upon P summation of N is equal to 0 to P minus 1 AN XOR AN plus R where this tau is referred as the phase shift of the sequence AN. If you say this is the AN as the sequence, then this tau is the phase shift and C of tau. This C of tau is the amount of similarity between the sequence and the phase shift. Say this is the sequence and tau is the phase shift and c of tau is the amount of similarity. And this definition will also be clear when we see an example. Why waiting? Let's see the example for Golomb's randomness postulates. So, we have three rules in order to check the Golomb's randomness postulate. Rule number one is in every period, we know what is a period, right? If we have a sequence, then there will be multiple periods involved. So, we are taking only one period and in every period, the number of ones differs from the number of zeros by at most one. In other words, if the period that we are taking, if we have a period which is of length 8, then there should be four zeros and four ones in that period. Suppose if the length is 9, it is an odd number, right? In that case, 
the number of zeros or the number of ones can differ by one it means there can be four zeros or five zeros or there can be four ones or five ones so this is rule number 1 and coming to rule number 2 in every period so we are taking a period in every period half the run should have length 1 so if you take a period we know what is a period right a period is a part of a sequence so if we have a big sequence we are taking a period and this period is going to be repeated in the sequence we are focusing only on the period now in this period or in every period half the run should have length 1 we know how to calculate the runs we have just seen the definition so half the runs should have the length 1 and 1 fourth should have the length 2 and 1 eighth should have the length 3 1 16 should have length 4 and so on and so forth so we are taking a period and we are calculating the runs and we are checking how many runs are with the length 1 how many runs are there in the length 2 and we are checking that half the runs should have length 1 and 1 fourth should have length 2 and so on and so forth as long as the number of runs so indicated exceeds 1 moreover each of these lengths there are almost equally runs of zeros and ones so this is exactly rule number 2 and rule number 3 is the autocorrelation function should be two valued we have just seen the definition c of tau is equal to 1 upon p summation of k is equal to 0 to n a n xor a n plus r and this value of c of tau should be two valued don't worry about this now when we solve an example at that time we will see the last column while calculating c of tau will be having two values so let's see the example now the example is considered the periodic sequence s is equal to 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. remember this is not a sequence this is a period so in a big sequence we have taken only a period now what we are required to find we are required to find whether this binary sequence is random or not so what we are going to do we are going to confirm this using Golomb's randomness postulates. Golomb's randomness postulates has three rules. What is rule number one? Rule number one is finding the number of zeros and number of ones. The number of zeros or number of ones should differ only by one. So in this case, let's compute how many zeros are there. One, two, three, four. How many ones are there? One, two, three. So the number of zeros is four and number of ones is three. And we can confirm that the number of zeros and number of ones are differing by one. So rule number 1 is satisfied. Coming to rule number 2, we are going to find the runs. Now let's see how many runs are here. So we are starting with 0, 0, 0, 0, it is continuing up to this and the next bit is different, right? So this is one run. So 0, 0, 0 is one run. Then we are taking 1 and then the next bit is 0. It's not 1. So this is the next run. So 1 alone is the separate run and then we are moving to this 0 and 0 is also only one bit is there and there are no more zeros. So here only we have 0, so 0 is the third run and then we are starting with 1, then the next bit is 1 and we are ending up to this. This period ends here, so this is the fourth run. So in this case we have 4 runs, 1, 2, 3, 4. So the total runs is 4 and we will calculate the number of runs with length 1. So we have 1, 2. So we have 2 runs of length 1, this is 1, this is 2 and we have one run with length 2 and we have one run with length 3 so if you see here how many runs are there 1 2 3 4 out of 4 runs half the runs are with length 1 can you see here out of 4 we have two runs of length 1 and then we have one run of length 2 and one run of length 3 so this is also satisfying rule number 2 and coming to rule number 3 we are going to find the autocorrelation function c of tau and remember the c of tau should be two valued the c of tau is the autocorrelation function and this is as per the definition to do this we are going to take this value tau which is from 0 to 6 why because we have a period of length 7 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so the tau value will be from 0 to 6 and we are just taking this s this is the sequence s and this sequence s is rotated tau times for the first row we are rotating the s for zero times that is we are not going to rotate so s rotated tau will be the same as like s then in the next attempt we are going to rotate s by one time because for second row tau value is one if tau is equal to two we are going to rotate s two times so remember s is already given in the question so let's start computing the table from the first row 
how many times it is rotated zero times it means there is no rotation so this s will be placed here as such this is s rotated by tau times now let's say this tau is equal to 1 means this zero goes this side it means one time you are going to make a shift so just take this zero and place it here it means 0010110 so this is the sequence s yes, rotated tau times that is one times if you do it for two times this is yes now then do this rotation two times the zero goes here the zero goes here so two zeros are going this side so these two zeros are going this side then we will be ending up with this value so when tau is 0 1 2 3 up to 6 then you are going to do the rotation as per tau times so s rotated with tau times the values are here then what we are going to do is this value is just exord with s yes. this is as per the definition that is s yes, that is this s exord with s yes, rotated by tau times so i am going to perform s yes, exord with s yes, rotated by tau times so this s yes and s yes, rotated by tau times both are same when you perform exord for the same input we will be getting all zeros so that is what we have here how did i get this i am taking s yes, which is this and i'm exoring with s rotated by tau times with is this because i am at tau is equal to 1 so when you perform this this value exor with this value we get this result so how did i get this take this exor this with this you will get this so when you perform this you will get all the values of s exor with s rotated by tau times then how we are going to perform c of tau this is actually the phase shift right just see this value right this value s yes, and this value for this tau equal to 0 it will always be 0 so i am taking 0 or 7 which is the length of the period so we always ignore tau is equal to 0 let's start with tau equal to 1 which is this value and compare this with this value then how many bits are similar that is what the definition says the similarity of the phase shift right so here the first bit is same the second bit is also same third bit is different leave it fourth bit is one here fourth bit is one here so three bits are similar fifth bit is zero here fifth bit is one no then one this is zero so no then this is one this is one so there are four bits similar so four bits are similar the length of the period is 7 so we know the length of the period will always be 7 so the second part will be always 7 so the first part is 4 here let's go to the next row which is this compare this with this how many bits are matching first bit is matching so 1 second bit is not matching third bit is matching so c of tau is 2 for now then fourth bit is not matching fifth bit is not matching sixth and seventh bits are matching so two bits are matching so 2 plus 2 4 so four bits are similar so this way we can compute c of tau and if you see here the c of tau is two valued which is 4 comma 7 where 7 is the length of the period and 4 is the value and in all the cases we are getting only 4 as the result so as per the definition rule number 1 is satisfied rule number 2 is satisfied and rule number 3 is also satisfied because c of tau is two valued which is 4 comma 7 and we are ignoring the first row tau is equal to 0 hence we can say the sequence s is equal to 0001011 satisfy the golomb's randomness postulates before we conclude let's see the homework question test the sequence this sequence using golomb's randomness postulates and post your answers in the comment section i hope now you have understood what is pseudo random and truly random numbers we have also have understood the golomb's randomness postulates with an example i hope the session is informative and thank you for watching